One of the most surprising areas of all the referendum results was really just how much there really was a split in the votes. No matter who the type of person was and what the area was, indeed, the only really truly demographic, when you really look at it, that overwhelmingly voted for Brexit were, ironically, the people who, back in the 70s, were the original people who voted for it. A lot of people really do make the the assumption that the North is really Brexit land. However, it's not really. When you look at the numbers, the, the overwhelming area was, you know, the southeast, you know, just below the Midlands in that area. That was the true area. The places that had originally voted overwhelmingly to join in the first place. But one of the groups that was split because we're not talking about them today. One of the groups that was split was, of course, farming. And, of course, farmers were very, very, well, adamant in most cases that they leave the EU because somehow it was going to be better. Uh, and, of course, ambiguity ensued, as all the pro-Brexit arguments really were. They were just, it was going to be better. And of course, the one of the first things um, that a lot of these farmers lost were their EU funding grants. And of course, they're not going to be replaced. Um, 80% of all small farmers do face some form of bankruptcy um, within the event of a no-deal Brexit. <laughs> so that is a very, very fast reality that is very quickly approaching. Um, you know, but the other thing is our rights and regulations, because the Brexiteers were very quickly to trumpet, especially Michael Gove, that no regulations would be changed, that we would be adopting and keeping our high food standards, yet at the same time they would also be saying that we were also going to lower regulations. Of course, they've never said what. Um regulations that are going to lower and of course the food regulations have always been on the table so we're going to cover uh, this article from the guardian that goes over just that but before we do uh, please do remember to hit that like and share button and of course uh, please if you would like to support the channel in another way there are links down below to my patreon page as well as a one-off donation link and thank you to the people that do support me and of course now we'll get into the article so this comes from The Guardian. The title is, Report Cast Doubt on UK Pledge to Prevent Low-Quality Food Imports. Ministers' pledges to preserve the UK's food and farming standards after Brexit will not prevent the import of lower standard products and could spell potential disaster for Britain's farmers, a report has found. Not surprising. Um... You know, this is one of the things that we did warn about. But, here you go. The government has repeatedly, I mean they have, repeatedly promised that a ban on chlorinated chicken and hormone-treated beef would remain in place after Brexit, and has made changes to the way the future trade bills will be scrutinised. But, ministers have refused to sign safeguards on imported food into law, despite pressure from consumers and civil so civil society groups. The headline bans on two products will still allow a large number of other low quality standard imports, while the changes to the way trade bills are managed are too weak to ensure a robust scrutiny of their impacts according to the damning verdict of the Future British Standards Coalition, which represents farmers, food producers, and animal welfare and green campaigners. And facing a potential second rebellion by his own MPs on the agricultural bill, the government agreed to strengthen the security and the scrutiny of future trade bills with an, with an expanding trade and agricultural commission, a statutory body with powers to advise on bills for the next three years, 
This was hailed by the National Farmers Union as heading off potential problems with trade bills and lowering import standards. However, the uh, FBSC has found in a report on Friday that ministers would still have many power to change the rules on food imports without parliamentary votes or robust scrutiny. Once again, these are the Brexiteers that are doing this. The people who whined on for years about the importance of parliamentary sovereignty and the supremacy of parliament and how important it was to carry out this process. Where are they now? <laughs> so some standards uh, on the use of antibiotics in farming, uh, for instance, have already been scrapped and rules governing the use of hormones on, on animals and additives in food will also be easier to alter. The report also found that the TAC, under the current plans, would not include representatives with expertise on public health, environment and animal welfare and consumer protection. Cathy Demley, of the, of the group who published the report, said that she was very positive about the setting up of the TAC, but it needed more powers and more expertise. She said, absolutely loads of food products could be affected by the loosening of standards done behind closed doors as part of the trade deals. There should be pro proper scrutiny on issues such as antibiotic resistance, public health, and the impacts of products on climate change, biodiversity loss, she said. And the antibiotic resistance was a particular problem, she said. The UK has high standards to prevent the overuse of antibiotics. And antibiotic use in farming has fallen in recent years, but many other countries still use anti antibiotics um, prothet prothetic uh, prothetically, as uh, also as growth promoters, and which encourage the growth of resistant superbugs. The lack of the rules on imports means that without strict measures to prevent it, meat and other products containing superbugs that are resistant to antibiotics could be imported under future trade agreements, threatening to spread such pathogens to the UK. I think the government does not want this, and it does not want its hands tied in any way when it goes to trade talks. So they have provided us with reassurance and advisory groups to give the impression that something robust is happening. But none of this actually holds the government to account, Damey said. Some of the impacts of lower, of lower standard imports are also being felt on climate. Deforestation in some areas mean that agricultural products is harming the climate. Beef from Brazil, for instance, has a carbon footprint about five times greater than the equivalent produced in the UK. Demley calls for ministers to strengthen safeguards by at least agreeing to widen the remit of the, of the TAC and ensure that it is staffed with experts on environment, public health and animal welfare as well as just trade. Consumers have constantly rejected the prospect of poorly produced food that hurts people, the planet and animals, she said. The government needs to show the public that it is listening and taking advice from a wide range of experts. George Dunn, the chief executive of the Tenants Farmers Association, said the unity of voices across farming, environmental and animal welfare and public health groups undermines the imperative that the UK government does not drop the ball in reaching trade agreements which undermines domestic food production standards. And extending the tenure of the TAC will mean nothing if it is toothless, sidelined and ignored. Now is the time for the government to show that it has indeed um, determined to deliver in its general election manifesto and the commitment to protect standards in trade. Well, <laughs> got news for you. Uh, the government has already done that. Um, the Japan deal that we have signed has already weakened, as of next year, um, your privacy protections. This was done in a trade deal and I have been warning you all constantly throughout all this that they will not need to go to Parliament to change laws. All they will do is do a trade deal and then that's it. The, the door's open. Doesn't matter about the rules. Doesn't matter about this. This is why 
the EU is so adamant about all these other different things that we're doing. For example, just being able to know what it is we are intending to deregulate. We won't tell them, which is stupid, but that's Brexit for you in a nutshell, of, as always. So, thanks for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, if you would like to support the channel in a different way, there are links down below. So, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next time.